What's up guys and welcome to my first ever tutorial about color grading GoPro footage in DaVinci Resolve. Today I'm going to be showing you my own workflow which I've been developing for quite some time now and I'm very happy to show you some of my little tricks I have up my sleeve and how to treat the GoPro footage to get very nice results. So as you can see I already set up my notary right here. I'm going to explain it to you real quick. First of all, we are going with noise reduction. On GoPro footage, there's always some slight noises in the shadows or in darker parts of the footage. And just to get rid of that, we're gonna apply some noise reduction. Then we go for the exposure, just in case we're a little bit overexposed or underexposed, we have can change it here. Then we go to balance. Balance is important if our shot is like, if we mismatch the white balance or if it's a little bit too greenish or too much magenta in it, then we go for contrast, which is pretty much self-explainable. And then we start pushing in some colors on the primaries. On the curves, we're gonna start changing some hues. Then on the foreground and background notes, I always have them here just in case we need to do some specific changes on the footage which is most of the time not that necessary, but just in case we have that here. Then we go for the adjustments. Most of the time I do some sharpness adjustments and go push the saturation or reduce it, whatever is needed. Then we have the Glow here. Glow is a very nice plugin uh, from DaVinci Resolve. And then we have Dehancer here, which is a paid plugin. Uh, but achieves very, very nice results. This is very optional. We're gonna come to this later on. Before we start grading, I always go underneath file. I go to the project settings and I go to the color management underneath color science and I go to DaVinci YRGB color managed. I deactivate automatic color management and go for custom. Then I go underneath Timeline Color Space and set this to DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate. This is an optional step. I just do it to ensure that I, no matter on what footage I'm working on, I always have the same results. My tools are behaving the same way I expect them to, which is just something that gives you more consistency and consistency is just key in color grading. For input color space, we obviously have Rec 709, which the GoPro is delivering us. And for output color space, we have Rec 709 again, which is fine. That's all we have to do in here. And then you just have to click save. And now basically, when we come in here, we are not anymore in Rec 709 color space, but we are in DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate color space. When we go out here, we are back in Rec 709, which is perfect for pretty much every platform out there. Okay, before we start doing anything to the footage, it's important that we start analyzing it. For this, we go to our scopes. We make them bigger, obviously, so we can check them out. It's important that you know how scopes are working and what they're telling you. So let's just quickly look at the footage. Already on this frame, I can see that we have pretty much a blown out sky. When I was recording this shot, I knew that I would have to deal with this just in order to keep all the details alive in the darker parts, in the shadows, and obviously at the mountain. We can see that our mountain is pretty well lit. We're probably a little bit higher than needed, but just to keep all the detail alive around the center of attention, which should be the mountain, I exposed for that. And we always should expose for the center of attention, which in this case would be the mountain and the guy on the edge. Okay, let's start off with the exposure. For the exposure, I always go into the HDR wheels. I go underneath the global settings. Before I do any change here though, I go to the color space and set it to Rec 709 and same goes for Gamma to Gamma 2.4. I do this just to ensure that we have the most realistic and natural change in exposure because with this color space, which the GoPro is delivering us, we can change it as camera would have seen it. So if I go down one stop here, it would be the same as you would do it in the camera itself. We don't need that much though. We just go down a little bit 
just to keep the mountain right where it belongs. Let's check the scopes here. By the way, if you don't see this uh, qualifier on, on the scopes here, just go up here, go to display qualifier focus. So I think we're good on exposure. We can change it afterwards if needed anyway. Then let's go over to balance. Balance, we see underneath the vector scope. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit. If our shot would be of balance, usually that would be if we have our wrong right balance or like it's too greenish or whatever. Let's say if I pull it on the greenish side, uh, we are off center here and it's important to keep the shot on the center. So if we check it out, it's pretty much perfectly balanced right here. I don't think we have to do anything here. Let's go on to contrast. Contrast, I start with underneath the gain and push up the gain a little bit, probably go down on the gamma, so the mid-tones, just to get in some basic contrast. Keep playing around with it until you have a decent result. Always keep the scopes in your eye. Obviously, we don't want to crush the shadows or go way too high. Our detail, our most important stuff should always be around here, as you can see. So our highlights are a little bit high, obviously, shadows, but we have the most detail right on the center of the scopes. We could probably even go down a little bit further and get the highlights up a little bit. And then we push in some contrast. And looking pretty good. Let's see what we've done here. So this is a pretty big change, but I really like it. Important to know is also that if we push the contrast, we're also pushing the saturation. So let's deactivate it, check the vector scope. You can see that we introduced some saturation into the shot, but I really like it. Now let's go on to the primaries. That's where some of the magic starts happening. Underneath the vector scope, we can see that our shot is going towards the yellowish, reddish direction and towards the bluish and cyan or cyan direction. This is basically a natural complementary color scheme, which happens most of the time in landscape shots because we have a blue sky right here and obviously the golden hour light of the sun. And when we're going for looks, I would always try working around the most natural color scheme, which is most of the time this one, but at certain times it can be different ones. Obviously we could push this shot towards the magenta direction or greenish direction, but I would never go that hard on 8-bit footage. Okay, so let's work around that color scheme. I make it smaller. So what I could do is I push in some yellows into the highlights just to emphasize on the golden hour vibes. Keep in mind to be very gentle on these changes. Then we go underneath the gamma and counteract that push towards a warm direction. Being very gentle and keep playing around until you have a decent result. Obviously this would be much easier with a color panel from DaVinci where you have like the knobs to turn around. We only have our mouse, but we can achieve great results with that as well. I think that's good for now. Let's check it out, what we did. So you can see we warmed our shot up a little bit, but we are still in the center. That's because we didn't change anything on the shadows. So we have them still black as they should be. Okay, for the curves, we go underneath the hue versus hue curve. We choose the blue. And what I like to do is I always push it towards the cyanish direction, just a little bit, keep the changes small. Same goes for the yellow. Let's see, we could go for the orange and teal look, obviously, but I don't really like that too much. I prefer the yellowish direction. We could also introduce some saturation, bump that up a little bit in order to get some color separation. So it's a very small change, as you can see, but in color grading, it's all about small changes. 
For the foreground and background node, I don't see a use for them right now, so let's just ignore them. Okay, for adjustments, as I already told you, most of the time I'm using the adjustments to push in some mid detail. And we go for some additional sharpness. So when we look at the shot, it's much more crispier. Okay, now that we're done with the basics, we go on for the plugins, which one of them is Glow. And I really love Glow, it's just so, it makes the image so nice. We go for a soft light, then we dial back the shine threshold. We go back on the spread a little bit, then we increase the gamma just to keep some of these shadows alive because I feel like they're way too crushed. Go back on the gain. I always keep an eye on the scopes because we're a little bit high there. Go back on the gain a little bit, then we go for the gamma, push it up. Just play around with the sliders a little bit more. Then we go back on the saturation, I think. This is way too much. Okay, so, okay, I feel like that's looking nice. Let's check out what Glow is doing to the footage. See, always look at the center of attention, obviously. We're crushing our shadows down here a little bit, little bit but that's not important at all. We want to have the mountain shining very nicely which is the case in my opinion. It's a little bit hot on the highlights, I feel like, so we go back to the contrast node and we dial back our highlights. Okay, looking perfect. Right now, we could also just leave it here. We could export it and we have a beautiful shot. But what I always like to do is to go on and go a little bit further than that. The Hunter is a paid plugin, which is basically an emulation for film stocks and it enables you many, many features, which are just so nice. First of all, we get to choose a film stock of our liking. Then we can go for film grain, we can, can go for halation, we can go for bloom, it's just amazing, amazing, amazing. First of all though, we need to change the color space from Rec 709 to the Winchy White Gamut Intermediate because we are in that color space, obviously. Then we go down to film stock, we can choose a film stock of our liking. I most of the time just go through them and choose one which I really like or which is doing something very nice to the picture. I guess I could go with Kodak Gold right here. Then we can play around with the sliders a little bit. Then we go down for the film grain. For the film grain I always go for the film resolution and push that up to the maximum just so we keep our detail alive and go back on the shadows, mid tones and highlights of the grain because it's just so strong. Then we go on for halation. I really like halation. If you don't know what halation is doing, it's creating a very nice fall off around the highlights, which is usually only on analog footage. So let me show it to you. If I crank it up all the way and now I disable it, enable it. So you can see what it's doing. And most of the time I keep this very subtle, just a little bit, not too much. We don't have to overdo it. It's all about the small changes. And for the bloom, I also do sometimes enable bloom, also dial it back. It's also creating a very nice, yeah, glowing, glowing feeling, making it look very, very pleasing to the eye in my opinion. So let's see what we did with the dehancer node. I deactivate it, or activate it. As you can see, we lowered our contrast a little bit. Our highlights are not peaking anymore. We crushed them down. Same goes for the shadows. Also the shadows, if you look at the scopes right here. Also for the shadows, we raised them a little bit through the film stock. 
it's just making the footage look much more, I don't know, pleasing and way more delicious in my opinion. But as I told you, this is just optional. We don't have to do this. I already like it this way as well, but I always want to go a little bit further. Last but not at least, we go to noise reduction and we go there and go for three frames, crank that up a little bit around six ish. We go to spatial threshold, unlink luma and chroma and push in some chroma to about six ish as well. I do this just to clean up the footage a little bit. If we do some contrast pushes and we twist the hues, we get some noise and to counter this, I introduce some noise reduction most of the time, especially on the shadows. It's very minimal, but it does help. Then finally, if we want to, we can go for a vignette, which most of the time I do just to keep the eye locked onto the center. We go in here, move this to the side and just pull it down a little bit. Don't go too crazy. We could also then go for this note and push it up. And let's see what we did here. It's all about these subtle changes. So yeah, I guess this is ready to go. Let's have a quick rundown about what we did here. Let's deactivate these nodes and enable them one after each other. So first of all, we went for some exposure change, just to get closer to where we should be. Then balance, we didn't have to do anything. Then we went for contrast, which is obviously already a quite drastic change. Then we went for the primaries and pushed in some yellows. We warmed the image up a little bit. Then we went for the curves and made this color scheme lean a little bit more towards the science side, which I prefer, that's all subjective, and towards the yellowish side, the yellowish orange side. As you can see, it's a small change, but it does a lot. Then we went for some sharpness. Then we put on glow and you can already see how much glow is affecting the image. Then we went for the dehancer, which adds an analog feeling to the footage and gets rid of this digital taste the GoPro delivers us and makes it looking a bit more natural in my opinion and I really like that. And last but not least, we went for the vignette and added noise reduction just to clean it all up. And yeah, that's basically it. The great thing about these changes is that we could easily translate this grading to another shot without breaking anything. That's very important on the GoPro footage as it just breaks apart easily. If you work with qualifiers and all that fancy stuff, we don't need that. We just keep the changes as globally as possible and get the most out of it. Let's just check it out on full screen.